Hi everyone, in this video we will be going over A-Level Accounting 2023 May June Paper 2 1 question number 2. Paper 2 consists of 4 questions, 2 of them will be of 30 marks and 2 of them will be of 15 marks and the total time limit given for this paper is 1 hour and 45 minutes. And since question number 2 is of 15 marks, ideally we should be spending about 17 and a half minutes in order to solve this question and in this video as well we will be attempting to solve it under 17 and a half minutes. So without any further delay, let's get started. Param uses control accounts to verify the accuracy of his businesses, sales and purchases ledgers and he provided the following information for the month ended 30 April 2023 relating to trade receivables. Okay, and we were told that there were no credit balances in the sales ledger on 30 April 2023. Uh, Alright, we now need to prepare the sales ledger control account for April 2023 and the dates are not required. So we first need to start with our opening balance, which is given right here on the date of 1st April 2023. And we have both the debit as well as credit balances. So we need to write this amount down as our opening balance on the debit side. And we need to write this amount as the opening balance on the credit side. So we can just write it down as balance brought down. That's 14,890 on debit. And again, balance brought down as 610 on credit. Now we are given contra entries with the purchase ledger. And always remember that the contra in our CS ledger control account will go towards our credit side. So we just need to write this amount down under the heading of contras. So that will be our contras. Then we are given credit sales. And remember that credit sales will just increase the amount that we are yet to receive from our credit customers. And the increments of such amounts should always be recorded on the debit side for our sales ledger control account. So we're just going to record this amount of 153,480 on the debit side. And we can write it under the heading of sales. All right, the next one we have is credit customers checks returned. So this just refers to when the credit customers have paid you a check and the check does not work so we just have to return it back to them which means that we still have not received this amount of 880 so this increases the amount that we are yet to receive from our credit customers which means that this should also be recorded in our debit side and we can just write this amount down under the heading of return checks and it's 880 all right, now discounts allowed is given to be 4,830 and discounts allowed is just going to decrease the amount that we are yet to receive from our credit customers. So this should be written in our credit side. Let's write it down. So that will be our discounts allowed and the amount was 4,830. Then we're given the interest charged on overdue accounts. So the interest charged on overdue accounts just increases the amount that we are yet to receive from the credit customers. So this should go towards our debit side. And we can write this down under the heading of interest charges. And the amount was 540. The next item we have is irrecoverable debts written off. This will decrease the amount that we are yet to receive. So we just need to record it in our credit side. And we can write it down under the heading of irrecoverable debts. And the amount is 1830. Okay. Then we have our receipts from credit customers. So we have now received 148,200. So this will definitely reduce the amount that we are now yet to receive because we have already been paid this amount. So we should record this amount on our credit side under the heading of bank because we will be receiving this amount in our bank account. So that will be bank with the amount 148,200. And the last item we have is return inwards. Return inwards also definitely decreases the amount that we are yet to receive. So this also goes towards our credit side and we can write it under the heading of returns inwards. And the amount was 2,790. Okay, and we were told that there were no credit balances in the sales ledger on 30 April 2023. It just means that we will now have our closing balance only on our 
credit side. So that will be the balancing figure. And in order to figure this out, we first require the total from our debit side. And that's going to be the sum of these four amounts. So that's 14,890 plus 153,480 plus 880 plus 540, which results in the total of 169,790, which will be the total for our credit side as well. And now in order to figure out our balancing figure, we just need to subtract all of these amount from the total. In this case, that's going to be 169,790 minus 610 minus 1,850 minus 4,830 minus 1,830 minus 148,200 minus 2,790, which results in our closing balance to be 9,680. And always remember that we need to write down the closing balance of this month as the opening balance for the next period on the opposite side. So that's 9,680 as our opening balance for the next month. All right, this concludes the first part. Let's move towards the second one. We now need to identify the books of prime entry for each of the following. The first one is discounts allowed, and the book of prime entry for this is going to be cash book, because always remember that we only record cash discounts. Then the second one is irrecoverable that's written off. This will go towards our general journal. Okay. We can now move towards the third one. We need to state three benefits of maintaining control accounts. So the very first benefit is that it will help check on the arithmetical accuracy of the purchases and sales ledgers. So helps check the arithmetical accuracy of the purchases and sales ledgers. And the second benefit is that it will help reduce the chance of fraud because remember that our purchases and sales ledgers and the purchases control account and the sales ledger control account will be prepared by two different persons. So there will be less chance of fraud. So helps reduce the chance of fraud. And the third benefit is that it will provide the details of our total trade payables and the trade receivables, which helps in preparing our financial statements. So provides um, details of total trade payables and total trade receivables. which helps in preparing financial statements. Okay, that's all for the third part. Now, uh, let's move towards the next one. We're given additional information. So the balance of the sales ledger control account at 30 April 2023 did not agree with the total of the individual customer account balances at this date and the following errors were discovered, some of which affected the sales ledger control account and some of which affected the customer account balances. Okay, for the fourth part, we need to calculate the revised sales ledger control account balance. Okay, for this, we will just start with the control balance account at 30 April 2023. So that's control account balance at 30 April. We already calculated it in the first part and that was 9680. Now we need to figure out uh, which of these errors will affect the sales ledger control account. That will only be adjusted in this part. And if these errors relate to customer account balances, we can just exclude them because it does not really affect our sales ledger control account. Okay, the first one is return in words of 720 had been credited to the account of Rafik stores instead of Rafe stores. So again, we're talking about customer accounts. And this is an error relating to the customer account balances, which does not really affect our sales ledger control account. So we can just skip it. 
The second one is that a sales invoice for 820 had been omitted from the books of accounts. Now, this is an error of omission. So, we previously forgot to include this sales of 820 in our sales teacher control account. And remember that sales will increase the amount that we are yet to receive from our credit customers. So, we will have to add this amount of 820 to our control account balance. Let's do that. So this is just going to be sales omitted. Okay, the third one is that the balance of a credit customer's account 430 had been brought down as 340. Again, this relates to our customer account balances, which does not really affect our sales teacher control account, so we can skip it for now. Then the fourth one is that the total of returns in was journal had been understated by 470. Remember that we're talking about journal, and the error in our journal will definitely have an effect on our sales teacher control account because we prepare the sales teacher control account on the basis of our books of prime entry, which includes journal as well. So we need to adjust for this the return inwards, which will reduce the amount that we are yet to get from our credit customers is understated. So we still have to include 470 as our returns inwards, which will definitely decrease our control account balance. So we just have to subtract this amount. Let's do that. So that's going to be 470 and we're subtracting it because it is the understated returns inwards. All right, and the last one is that the interest of 40 charged on an overdue account had been correctly entered in the journal. So if it's been correctly entered in the journal, there will be no error in our sales teacher control account, but had been credited to the customer's account. And this will only affect our customer account balances. So we can just exclude this for now, which means that our revised sales teacher control account balance will be the sum of these three months. So that's 9,680 plus 820 minus 470, which results in 10,030. This is just going to be our revised control account balance. Okay, this concludes the fourth part as well as the entire question. If you found this video useful, make sure you like the video and leave a comment below. And make sure you're subscribed to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you do not miss any of these videos in the future. Thank you.